So in this video, I just wanted to give a quick tutorial on how to use how to do uh, the needle turn applique technique. I've been doing needle turn for years now, and it's a really fun and simple applique technique for having fully finished um, edges, no raw applique here. All of the edges are turned under and hidden inside, so you won't worry about anything fraying as you use your, your quilted item. Um, and it just creates a really clean and beautiful look. It's a great handwork project that's also easy to take with you um, if you like to do travel sewing on the go. It's really fun and um, there are a million different needle turn um, patterns out there so you can apply this you know, basic technique to just about anything. I'm just gonna go through the very um, simplest explanation for how to get started and then as you go into harder um, uh, patterns, there are different uh, techniques you'll need for doing um, different kinds of curves and that sort of thing, but we can cover that on a future day. So this is just um, a quick pat uh, practice pattern that I have up on my website. The website is blueskymoderncraft.com and this is called the Into the Void pattern. It's a free pattern, just a rounded triangle that's great for kind of just practicing the basics. Um, you can use it in a few different ways. You can use it as a whole um, triangle like this one. Another example here. You can also cut it in half and arrange it in, diff ooh, arrange it in different ways with different shapes like I've done with this one. And you can also use it for reverse applique, which is when you turn, um, you cut the shape out of the top one and remove that piece and then turn the edges under so that the background shows through. So instead of having your applique piece on top of your background and it's the thing that's raised here, your your um, top piece, your applique piece is being turned under, allowing the background to show through. So it just creates a little bit different look and is a fun kind of alternative uh, way to do it. So with this one, to do applique, or needle turn applique, you'll need a background piece of fabric and your applique piece, of course. Um, patterns can vary as to whether or not they include the seam allowance in them. Um, and so you'll just need to read the pattern carefully to, to find out whether or not it does and whether or not you might need to add your seam allowance. With Into the Void, it is included. Um, and, but in this case, it also wouldn't matter a whole lot if it wasn't included and you didn't add it on, you just have a slightly smaller triangle, not the end of the world. It is more important for um, some patterns just with the way that they're laid out uh, and the way maybe different applique pieces in the pattern um, interact with one another and that sort of thing. But here, we're not gonna worry about it. It is already included, so you can cut it out just as it is on the pattern. It's designed to be centered inside a five inch square. So um, with the ideas with a charm pack in mind, you could make a whole bunch of these and create a really cute little wall hanging or um, uh, add them into a sampler quilt if you wanted, or even a table runner or coasters would actually be great too. Um, but you can also, of course, just cut them from any sort of fabric. And they're great sized um, for just trying it out with scraps too, so you're not really invested in any sort of uh, big fabric purchase with these. So anyway, so you've got a five inch background square. And then for the applique piece, the pattern tells you you'll cut out a rectangle, which would you then fold in half. You'll set the um, template, which is just for half of the triangle, set the template on the fold. So it'll look like, well, this one's pinned, but set it on the fold. Um, trace it out and then cut it open and that will give you your symmetrical triangle. You'll then fold both the applique piece and the background piece in half both ways. Fold that way, increase, and fold this way, increase, which will give you these little faint lines. And you can use that to center the applique piece on the background. So you'll just line up the different lines so that it's centered. You'll then use applique pins like these to pin it um, temporarily to your background. And that's where we're starting from here. Uh, just so you know, I will um, link to this below the video, but I also have a post on my blog that includes um, a full list of all of the different supplies I like to use for applique and links to those supplies so you can find them. Um, if you're looking for looking to just get started and you're not sure 
what you like, um, or if maybe you've been doing applique for a while, but you're curious to try some possibly new to use supplies, um, it's a, a helpful list that kind of, in, it breaks it down into both required supplies and um, optional supplies that might just kind of, you know, that are nice to have, but not necessarily needed. So once you're to this point, once you've got your, normally you would, you know, pin it down, I'd have probably four pins in a piece of this size because it's not very large. You're then going to baste your um, applique piece to your background piece. I like to thread baste, and to do that, I just use um, any old regular cotton thread. I just use a cheapo Coates and Clark black thread. It's nice if it contrasts with your applique piece so that you can easily see it to remove it later, um, but this is a great opportunity to just use up some old thread in your stash. It doesn't matter because you're just going to be removing it once you're all done anyway. So pick whatever thread you like. Uh, also doesn't really matter which weight you're using because again, you're gonna remove it later on. I typically just use a 50 weight, um, just regular quilting thread. And then a regular quilting needle. You're going to baste with a quarter inch seam allowance. And to do that, I like to use a seam gauge. This is a Dritz uh, seam gauge. <laughs> you can see mine is well loved and well used because almost all of the markings are gone, but you can still kind of see this quarter inch one is here. Um, normally if you buy it new, there's all kinds of extra writing in here that's just worn off over time. But since all I really need to know is how wide this quarter inch is, that's good enough for me. You can feel free to um, use a, a small ruler, anything with a quarter inch marking is fine. Some people prefer to go through and just kind of mark all the way around and then sew along their markings. I just sew and then kind of measure every so often as I go to make sure that I'm maintaining that quarter inch mark. So you'll start on one side. Generally, I start in the middle of a long piece. You don't really wanna start um, you know, in a corner or anything like that. So start somewhere in the middle. You're not going to knot this thread because again, you're going to remove it later. Um, so you wanna be able to just pull it out easily when you're done with it. So leave it unknotted. You'll start and leave a little tail, you know, loose as well and going around the outside. So again, in this instance, so we'll pull this needle through. Oops. Okay. And then I might go ahead and just start my next stitch, but then take my seam gauge and check and make sure that it, it's a good quarter inch, which it is. If you're a little more than a quarter inch, it's not a huge deal. You'll just have, um, you, the most important thing is that you want it to be consistent because if you're at a quarter inch in some places and three eighths inch of an, three eighths of an inch in other places, your, um, you know, your outside seam, instead of this being a straight line, you're gonna have it be kind of wobbly. So more than anything, the importance is consistency. Generally, people will use a quarter inch seam allowance. Some patterns will use a three eighths inch seam allowance. Just be consistent. You don't wanna go less than a quarter of an inch because when you turn this under as it is, you're only gonna wind up with an eighth of an inch because you've got a quarter inch and you're basically folding it under halfway. So you've only got an eighth of an inch here and an eighth of an inch turned under. If, you, um, if your seam allowance is less than a quarter of an inch, you're gonna have even less fabric to fold under, which is both harder to do um, and potentially leads to more fraying and that sort of thing, but is also just less secure because you just really don't have a lot of fabric to grab onto. So a little bigger than a quarter of an inch is fine, but you don't wanna go smaller than a quarter of an inch. And so you'll just keep going around the edge again, checking every so often to make sure you're still at that good quarter inch until you get back to the beginning. And you can remove your applique pins as you go. And then when I get back to the beginning, I like to um, go ahead and take a couple of stitches past where I began just to make sure that that's secured. Sometimes as you're starting to stitch, if you don't have as many um, stitches there, it can start to, you're, when you go to push under, you can sometimes kind of push past that seam allowance because your thread will kind of just loosen up. So just take another stitch or two in that seam line until it's you've overlapped a little bit. And then you're good there. So you can just trim off this, again, leaving a little bit of a tail just so that you can easily pull it out later. But then 
you're all set and ready to go. So you've got your quarter inch basted around the outside, no pins in your way. Now we can actually start appliqueing. Um, so for appliqueing, I like to use a, you can't even see it, but it's the 100 weight Wonderfill Invisible thread. It is a um, poly wrapped cotton. It's extremely thin, as you can see. Um, but it's also very strong, does not fray, it's very durable. I absolutely adore it. Um, this dove gray color, which again is linked in that blog post of supplies, um, will match just about anything. It's so thin that you really just cannot see it. Sometimes if I'm working with a really dark piece, I will use this blue gray Invisifil. But basically these are the only colors I pretty much ever use because they just disappear. If you're gonna use a, um, a lighter weight thread, a 50 or a 60 weight thread, you really are gonna wanna try to match your thread to your applique piece, not to the background, to the applique piece. Um, and that will help your stitches to, to disappear as much as possible. But the thinner the thread you can use, um, the thinner the thread you can tolerate. Some people don't like super thin threads, but the thinner you can go, the more your stitches will disappear. Um, and the less important it is to match your thread because the, the thread is so, so thin that you really just can't see it. So I'm using this 100 weight Wonderfill. Um, you will do a quilter's knot at the end. Boy, you can't even see it, but a little tiny quilter's knot at the end. And then decide where you wanna start on your piece. Again, it's helpful to start somewhere on uh, a straight edge, you don't start on a corner or anything like that. And I generally don't start where I started my basting stitches, um, just so that those threads are kind of out of the way. And also again, you know, if there is any chance of you kind of pushing those threads to loosen them up a little bit, it's nice if you've already kind of secured your seam for a while before you get to that point. So I'm gonna start on the opposite side. Okay, so now that we're all basted, we can go ahead and get started with our applique. So this is called needle turn applique because technically the idea is that you use your needle to fold under your piece like that. But I've always found that to be a bit awkward and um, just doesn't really work very well for me. So I just use my fingers. <laughs> so you're gonna just fold it under um, and you'll fold the top piece under until it meets the basting stitch. So that's why the basting stitch is there. It gives you a place to press the fabric um, down to, basically. So you have a wall of resistance that will then create a, um, uh, a seamless eighth of an inch seam allowance on the outside. So you'll feel it very clearly when you get to it. It's, it's quite obvious. You'll notice, you know, your finger just stops. So you'll fold it under until it hits there and then use your thumb to hold it down in place. You don't want to um, try to fold down very much at a time, just you know, half inch, inch worth of fabric or so at a time, because the more you try to fold under, the more it will just start to kind of come undone. You just can't really hold it very securely. So don't try to get ahead of yourself, just do a little bit at a time. Hold it down with your non-stitching hand. So in, that, in this case, that's my left hand. I'll hold the whole piece with my left hand and my thumb is holding that fabric down. And um, if you were uh, left-handed, you'd, you know, you'd hold it in your right hand and do the opposite. So now you're gonna take your needle, which you've um, again knotted in a quilter's knot. With this 100 weight thread, uh, I actually will wrap it around eight to 10 times when I do my quilter's knot because it's so thin. Um, just doing it the standard, you know, two or three times is not nearly enough. It'll just pop right through. So really you need to wrap it about eight or 10 times to give yourself a decent size knot that's not going to pop through. So now you're gonna come up from the underside, come up through the back. You're gonna go through the background and the applique piece to come up right up close to the edge of the applique piece. So I'm through the background, through the applique piece, which has been folded over, right up through the edge. And then pull your needle through until it, you know, until the, the knot um, meets it. Now you're gonna go back through the background, even with where you just came up. So I came up through the background and the applique piece. I'm gonna go back down just through the background, not the applique piece, through the background, and then tilt my uh, needle 
to the side and come back up through, oops, I'm caught my finger. <laughs> come back up through the background and the applique piece again, about an eighth of an inch or so over. So I'll show you that again. You can push it on through. Okay. So back down through the background, tilt, back up through the background and the applique piece. Okay. And on through. And you'll just keep going through the background, tilt, back up. Okay. Now, when you reach the point where you need to turn some under again, all you do is take your finger, turn it under, and again, hold it with your thumb. And keep going. Background, tilt, background and applique. Background, tilt, background and applique. There you go. And you'll just keep going around the whole piece. When you get to the corners, you want to try to turn under maybe even less fabric than you've been doing because if you try to turn, um, because there's more fabric in a smaller space here, if you try to turn more fabric under, if you get a little greedy, <laughs> you're just going to wind up with some really bulky corners um, that are hard to get to lay flat. So try to just maybe even just do one little turn under, take a stitch, one little tiny turn over, take a stitch, and so on. will help you get around those curves. You can also try clipping into the curves with a, a sharp pair of snips, just barely um, a sixteenth of an inch or so. You'd clip in you know maybe three or four little places on the outside of that curve can help it fold under a little bit better too if you're struggling with that. So you'll keep going all the way around till you come back to where you started. And usually, um, like my basting stitch, I will go ahead and uh, stitch a few stitches past where I began just to help again to secure it and make sure that it's, um, it's not gonna come apart there. And then you would, let's pretend this is my last stitch. You'll go back down through the background. Oops. Okay. Turn it over, and now to tie it off, you're gonna you're gonna take a stitch, um, but in the seam allowance underneath the applique piece. So you don't want to go through where you would see it up here. You're underneath the applique piece here, and you're gonna take a small stitch going through just the background. You don't want to go through the applique piece too, because then you would see your stitch on the front. So you're underneath the applique piece, but you're not gonna stitch through the applique piece. You're just stitching through the background. Take a small little stitch there, and then take your needle through the loop and pull it tight to knot it. And usually I'll do this two or three times just to make sure it's it's really good and secure because of course you don't want it to come undone. And then I would clip that thread, just leaving you know a small little tail, and then you can turn it back over and clip the basting threads in a few places and then pull them out and you're all set. You'll wind up with a piece that looks like this and you can move on to the next one. This is, again, just a great practice size, easy practice shape, doesn't have any weird things going on, um, and it's a fun way you just mix and match a whole bunch of scraps and see what you come out with. I'm really curious to see what you all do, um, and I, uh, I welcome any questions or comments down in the comments section. Again, feel free to check out that blog post that has um, some suggestions on the different supplies that I like to use. Uh, and links to get those supplies. Again, with this um, pattern, this is the Into the Void free pattern on my website, blueskymoderncraft.com. You can use the, the full size template just as it is. You can use it as a reverse template, um, in which case you would take two five inch squares and you're, these are basted together, but you can see there's um, a front and a back here, two squares, and cut the template from the top square and then you'll baste around the outside of that cutout and then fold under this way to stitch instead of folding on the outside of the piece. You'll fold under to stitch all the way around and it just creates a little bit of a different play on it where the background is what's creating the shape instead of the applique piece on top of the background. You can also just use the half template um, and create different shapes, different layouts with it, um, and just play around and see what, what you uh, can do, what, what you can create. Thanks so much for joining me today. 
and I'll see you next time.